Welcome to the Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner for this month. I'm going to tie an AP Black Nymph. This month I'm paying homage to my fly tying mentor, Andre Poyens, and this is a fly he invented many, many years ago, and it has stood the test of time um, and is still a very popular pattern today. This is a pattern I learned in his shop and tied thousands for the fly bins um, at Creative Sports in Pleasant Hill, California. I use this fly to imitate um, Betis nymphs tied down uh, smaller. I use it for a stonefly imitation um, and a number of other patterns. This fly gets down quickly and it's just catches fish. It's really a good pattern. So Andy, thank you for sharing this years ago and thank you for teaching me the wonderful art of fly tying. So let's review the materials for this fly. I'll cover them one by one so you can understand the specifics of each material. For a hook, I'm going to use a fire hole 718 size 14. This is a curved shank uh, barbless competition hook. For the bead, I'm going to use a 330 seconds matte black um, fire hole stone. This is a tungsten bead that matches this hook. For additional weight and to establish the area for the thorax, I'm going to use six wraps of a 0.015 lead wire. For the thread, I've got a 6 sot Danville flat wax thread that I'll use. For the tail and the wing case and the legs, I'm going to use some moose mane and I'll use a few fibers and you'll see how I um, cut this down for the tail, establish the uh, wing case, and cut this off for the legs. For the rib, I'm going to use a copper brown ultra wire in size BR, relatively fine. For the abdomen dubbing and the thorax dubbing, I'm going to use an SLF spiky dubbing. Uh, this is squirrel and uh, it's dyed black. The AP nymph has often been mischaracterized as an all purpose nymph. And that couldn't be farther for the truth. I, uh, I tied flies for the originator of this pattern for a lot of years. And AP stands for Andre Poyans. This is the Andre Poyans Nymph Series, or AP Nymph Black. So let's get started on this pattern. I've placed the uh, size 14 hook in my vise with the tungsten black matte bead and I'm going to wind six wraps of lead to form the thorax on this pattern and also add a little additional weight. Now when I finish wrapping this I want you to note I'm going to cut it off with the tag ends facing up um, and that's so that I have a half wrap at the at the front and rear of this lead to help weight the fly underneath and keep the fly um, fishing right. I don't want it to flip upside down and fish upside down and so this little trick will help your fly fish right. Next I'll take a, a section of moose and I've cleaned this and I've stacked it in my hair stacker and I'll tie this on right behind that lead to uh, help bridge the goiter that that lead has created. Um, and I'll tie it back to the tail set. And about halfway back, I'm going to reach in and trim off about half the fibers of this hair uh, just to help me um, slim down that body as we approach the tail and keep the tail from being overwhelming on the fly. The tail proportion should be about one and a quarter to one and a half times the gape of the hook. Uh, you don't want a real long tail on this as the nymph is a fairly 
a slim trim short tail. Next I'll tie in my uh, copper wire that I'll use for the rib. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some of my spiky squirrel dubbing and I'm going to spin this off to the thread and I'll capture a few fibers uh, wound around the hook and then I'll spin this up kind of to create a yarn or a rope out of it and I'll hold that nice and tight and I'll wind that dubbing all the way up to the back of the uh, wing case. I'm going to lead off with one wrap underneath the tail and it's, I'm going to use my thumb to splay that tail out and spread it out. I'm going to rib this pattern with about four to five wraps of my copper wire and I'll tie that off in front of the uh, in front of the wing case and trim off the excess. I'll follow that up by adding some dubbing uh, using the same technique, uh, capturing a few uh, fibers and then spinning this tightly into a yarn. And I'll wind that over my thorax area. Um, I'll typically wind this uh, backward and then forward back to the headset position. So next I'm going to fold the wing case over and tie that off right at the back part of the head. And then I'll grab three fibers from either side of the uh, uh, wing case and I'll fold those back to create the legs. And I'll, I'll first do the far side and then I'll do the near side. Then I can pull these legs upward and trim them off just a little bit beyond the wing case. I don't want these all the way back to the tail and I don't want them real short. I want them just about right. So the last tying step is I'm going to take a skosh more dubbing and I'm going to pinch this on my thread and I'm going to use that dubbing in a whip finish with my fingers. Um, that avoids having to whip finish on top of the dubbing. Uh, the whip finish or the dubbing actually becomes a part of the whip finish and it makes for a nice clean head. And the very last step in this pattern is I'm going to apply a layer or two layers of Solaris Bone Dry. I'll lay in one first layer and I'll uh, cure it with my uh, UV light. And then I'll put a drop on top of that and re-cure it. Uh, and cure it a little bit longer this time. So let me rotate this fly around in my vise so you can see all sides of it. Um, as you can see, this is a very slim trim nymph and a very effective pattern. And it's easy to tie, so give this one a try at home. I think you'll like it. It has stood the test of time. So that has been your Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner for this month. I hope you'll give the AP Black a try. It it is a good pattern. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow us at Sun River Anglers on Facebook. Thanks for watching.